Hello and welcome to Cattlemen's Day 2021. My name is Morgan Salachi, and today I'm going to talk about the concept of limit feeding, a concept that is not new, but has important implications for producers in the receiving and backgrounding segment of the cattle industry. Our objectives were to evaluate limit-fed high-energy diets compared to traditional roughage-based diets full-fed during the backgrounding phase on subsequent feedlot performance, health, and carcass merit. And finally, to develop an industry-friendly bulletin for limit feeding. We used 418 weaned heifer calves over the course of 90 days to evaluate performance by feeding them two different diets once per day. We fed them a high roughage diet ad libitum and a limit fed high energy diet at 81% of ad libitum intakes. We collected pen weights on a weekly basis and both diets consisted of 40% sweet grain with varying amounts of corn, alfalfa, and prairie hay. Overall, we found that cattle efficiency was improved with limit fed high energy diets. Across the top, both diets, high roughage, full fed, and high energy limit fed, you can see that there were no differences in terms of body weight between treatments across day zero and day 84, as you can see on the left. Looking at average daily gain in pounds per day, the high roughage cattle fed ad libitum gained 2.30 pounds versus the high energy limit fed cattle outgaining them at 2.64 pounds per day. In terms of dry matter intake, the high roughage full fed cattle ate 23.26 pounds of feed per day on average, and the limit fed cattle consumed much less at 17.32 pounds per day. In terms of gain to feed, the high roughage full fed cattle gained about 0.1 for every pound of feed consumed, compared to the higher energy limit fed cattle gaining about 0.1 five, three pounds for every pound of feed per day. So after the cattle finished the backgrounding and finishing phases, we had the opportunity to evaluate carcass results. And they showed that muscle deposition was imp actually improved in previously limit fed cattle, but only in the light sort group. Across the top of this chart, you can see the four different feed groups, the both high roughage and high energy limit fed with the corresponding light sort and heavy sort for each category. In terms of USDA yield grade, the, there were no differences across treatments. However, if you look at the high energy uh, category or feed group, between light and heavy, there was quite a bit of difference with the heavy sort having a higher yield grade score at 2.84 versus the light sort group at 2.43. In terms of ribeye area, in measured in square inches, there was significant difference between the high energy limit fed light sort group at 15 square inches compared to in the high roughage light sort group, they had a 14 square inch ribeye. In terms of liver scarring, there were no differences across treatments, but there was significant difference between light sort and, and heavy sort in the high energy limit fed treatment group. So based on these results, we conclude that cattle limit fed, a high energy diet consisting of primarily corn and fermentable fiber co-products in this study were 53% more efficient than cattle fed traditional roughage based diets with ad libitum access. And based on the carcass results, lightweight cattle previously limit fed high energy diets appeared to deposit more muscle and they had larger ribeye areas. I just want to thank you for listening and have an enjoyable Cattleman's Day 2021.